Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm here burning some EEPROMs and I ran across a problem that I need to solve. You see, this EEPROM programmer, the T48, cost me $61. And this one, the T56, cost me $199. And although they're both supposed to burn these 2716 EEPROMs that I'm supposed to use, um, this one does not, but this one does. So I decided to start investigating. So I have a whole bunch of these EEPROMs that I am reclaiming in my industrial EEPROM eraser. And uh, I started programming some of them and I was just getting really bad results. And you think, well, you know, these look, they're different. They came from different places and all that kind of stuff. But that's not it. I looked at the data sheet on these things and just we'll use the ST one as an example. And you can see that it is supposed to be programmed. That's the VPP at 25 volts. And when I set this programmer to use it, um, to start programming, it defaults to 21 volts, which is a little bit of a problem. And then I figured out that even then it wasn't actually putting out 21 volts. It was putting out 17 volts. And if I bumped it all the way up to 25 volts, it was only putting out 21. And I'll demonstrate that in just a little bit. But it reminded me of the very first PCB that I ever wanted to make. And it is inspired by a video I saw. This legend on YouTube, Necroware, showed that you could bend out one of the pins on the EEPROM and provide external voltage to program it and then leave all the rest of the pins connected to the programmer. And while I thought that was an awesome idea, the idea of taking the pin on one of these really old EEPROMs and bending it out and sticking a clip on there just absolutely mortified me. So I began to think, how awesome would it be if there was like a little circuit board that could do that for you? And I even asked around some of my friends that actually designed circuit boards, none of them were interested in it and I didn't know how to do it. So, you know, I was pretty stuck. Fast forward three years later, and I'm holding this bad boy in my hand. This is the EEPROM booster by another maker. That's me. You see, I learned KiCad and decided to build this board out and even gave it a couple of extra features that I think are kind of fun. And I was able to do that with the sponsor of this video, PCB Way. Now, if you've never designed a circuit board in your entire life, I've got a 45 minute video that will take you straight through the process of designing and uploading your board to PCB Way and getting it to your door for about five bucks plus shipping in about a week. And PCB Way makes all this possible. They bring this stuff and make it accessible to the average person like you and me so that we can you know, come up with weird things like this and have them in our hands. Like I'm holding this thing that I wished I could design three years ago. And that's the world that we live in right now, thanks to PCB Way. So while I'm assembling this board over here, I want to give you just a little layout of what you're looking at here, because it is kind of funny. We've got a row of jumpers here and a row of jumpers here. And what these jumpers decide is whether or not these pins are connected to the EEPROM programmer. So if every pin is a uh, jumper, then that is connected straight from the socket up top down to the EEPROM programmer. Then in here, right in here, these middle, these single rows, these are allowing us to get between the chip and the EEPROM programmer. So for instance, if I want to take a voltage reading, I can actually clip one of my pins on, uh, let's say if I'm doing a 2716, the fourth one over here and the fifth one for my power and ground respectively, and I can hook a meter up to it and see uh, you know, what the programming voltage is. Then over here, we have uh, three pins for VCC for providing, I guess I probably should label that VPP for providing your own programming voltage and three for ground. And the reason why I did that is I thought you might want to, you know, clip on it with the side. And so I actually left you a couple pins in the middle that aren't connected in case you bump together. So you have a little bit of a buffer there. And then um, one of the things people suggested in the original video was to add some capacitors. So these are optional, but I gave you the ability to add uh, 0 0.1 and uh, 10 microfarad capacitors. Then finally, the part of the board that gets a little bit weird is, and you can do this however you want, you can put a real socket, you can put a ZIF socket, but on this left side here, we have the socket that your EEPROM will go into, and then on the bottom, we have straight through pins that your uh, that will connect to the EEPROM programmer. And as you can see here, we have yes, no, yes, no, um, you know, don't solder anything from the... Uh, you know, from the bottom on the pins that say no, because you'll have your socket backwards. So let me show you how this thing works. 
All right, so here's the board fully populated. And I have one of those things that turned out to be kind of a nice error is that I didn't realize that when you look real close at these pins um, on a zip socket, they are these weird bent over metal things that don't quite fit into standard holes. They do fit into these female pin headers and it kind of worked out nice because I can take this off. It also deals with the fact that there would be clearance issues there on the first version of the board. I think I've got one over here. I, I don't have that all the way in, but I trimmed those bottom pins so it could sit down closer. Uh, you don't need to use a zip socket, but it's not a bad idea to, um, if you aren't gonna use one, I would recommend taking this thing out before you start prying that chip off. But if you uh, do use a zip socket, you, know, you can kind of leave the whole thing together and you can program all your chips with this adapter still in there. So the idea of this is that to start with, let's get let's get our red wires here and our black wires here. We're going to go completely uh, loaded here. So I recommend if you're going to add these DuPont wires here. Now I will say, if you want to program chips, you can definitely like just run your uh, 25 volts straight to this wire right here. But you also, if you do it this way, you do get the little extra decoupling capacitors and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up one of these for each the meter and the power supply and then i'm going to hook up one to use as a jumper again you can connect this however you want and then on this side i'm going to do the same thing where i connect oh i got one off i connect right there and i connect right there and i connect right here so the first experiment I want to do is I want to show you um, what the programmer does in its own natural state. So we're going to leave all these jumpers connected here. And I'm going to jumper over here on the 2716. It will be different on every EEPROM, which I guess is one thing I should show you. All right, so before I hook this stuff up, I want to show you a couple of design choices I made. If you look at this programmer right here, you can see that the notch is up front right next to this uh, thing here. If you look at this one, you can see that the notch is on the opposite side of this thing here. And so every one of these programmers is a little bit different as to where they want you to put pin one. And so the whole point of this board, the reason why it's shaped the way that it is, the reason why it's not numbered, is because I want you to be able to get this thing as close as possible to this um, rod here without causing any interference and then you might say well you know it's pretty lazy of you you got silk screen all over the board to not number the pins and the reason why i didn't number the pins is because i don't know what the numbers are you see when you look at a chip like this uh this is so if you come down here you start going one two three four five six seven and then over here uh, what is that 24 pin i think it's 24 pin um so then pin 13 is up here but if this was a 28 pin e prom then it would be, what would that be? Then it'd be pin 15 up here. So I don't know the numbers of the right side of the pins because the shorter the EEPROM, the lower the number is in the upper right-hand corner. So uh, with that in mind, you can just do your numbering yourself. And then the second thing is, in the event that you have some kind of conflict here, you can actually reverse this zip socket and put it the other way. I don't really care. This system is, it's a straight pass-through. So it doesn't really matter which way you put the zip socket. It doesn't matter which way you put the board. Uh, just know that they're straight through. There's no tomfoolery going on. All right. So experiment number one, as we look at this EEPROM programmer, you can see here that it wants pin one out here. So with this open, we're just gonna slide this in here, goes right in nicely and clip it down. Now, I don't recommend you doing a lot of pushing on this side. You know, these things aren't made for that kind of uh, lateral force. It's a little zip socket, but we're gonna hook it up and then show you what we got. All right, let's hook this up just the, uh, the introductory way. I will say while I'm doing this, that I have a video out comparing all three of the most common EEPROM programmers that I'll go ahead and link to in the description. Um, yeah, make sure that's pressed down there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up a meter with just uh, VCC and ground here with these little things <laughs> slipping around. I'm gonna hook that up like that. And then um, what we're gonna wanna do is the VPP pin is the fourth one down, two, three, four. Again, this is different for every single EEPROM, so check your data sheet. And then fifth pin down is the ground. And we're just doing this so that you can see what the programmer does in its natural habitat. So I'm gonna plug this thing in and we're gonna program. And you'll see that we have zero volts. Let me get this disconnected here. 
All right, so I'm gonna hit program. And program. And you can see we're getting 17.7 .7 volts even though the programmer is supposed to be programming at 21 volts. That is a problem. All right, so what we wanna do now, when we wanna use this uh, with external power, what we're gonna do, and I've got the EEPROM programmer unplugged. I should've used different jumpers. But we're gonna go ahead and pull that fourth jumper because we don't want the VPP to be coming from the uh, EEPROM programmer at all. We want it to only come from the external power. We do want to bind the grounds together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the ground connected as it was. We're gonna leave the power connected as it was, but instead the source of the power is gonna come from my benchtop power supply over here. And it's kind of nice because we'll be able to see on the meter that everything looks good before we even try to program this thing. So um, as you can see here, we have this, we'll plug this in. All right, so common sense tells you that you'd wanna go ahead and jack this straight up to the VPP, but that's honestly not what I found in real life. I found that every brand seems to have a sweet spot of where it wants to be. And sometimes, although putting it to 25 volts won't damage the chip, you might actually not get as good of a program. So we're gonna go down into the 19 volt range here. And we are going to start programming and I'll show you what's gonna happen. So 19 point, We'll go down just a little bit. We'll go 19 and a half ish. Okay, so we're at the 19 and a half ish range. Um, I'm gonna show you the programming screen. And you will see that when I hit program and program, we get a pin detect error. And of course we do, because we have this little jumper that is disconnecting uh, this pin from the EEPROM programmer. So what I like to do is I like to leave pin detect enabled until I check and make sure that every other pin except for the one that I expect not to be there um, works and then I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna hit back and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna uncheck this pin detect and now I can come in here and program and you will see that we should get a good flash. And there we go, that is absolutely perfect. So uh, where the programmer would want you to set a voltage of 21 or 25 and then who knows what it's actually gonna put out, um, this will allow you to dial in your voltage exactly how you want it to do, uh, verify it on your meter and get a nice clean flash on the cheap XGCO programmer. I wanna thank Necroware for the idea and I wanna thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video and I wanna thank you for watching this video. Have a great day.